In addition to another big funding round and a $10 billion valuation, Notion continued its steady release of new features through October, and they were headlined by the exciting new ability to group database items in most database formats. So let's take a look at those features that you're definitely going to want to know. So like I said, really the most impactful of these updates is the ability to group items within most database formats. And those formats include tables, lists, galleries, boards, and timelines. So let's see how it works within this people table. At the top of the database, we can click the three dotted menu, and we now have a group option. When we click the group option, we can choose a property by which to group the items in the database. So this people database has a company property where we choose each person's employer. So we can choose that property and that's going to create a toggle for each unique value of that company property. In this case, the people database has some people working for one hotels, some working for loggerhead labs and others working for the ringer. So within each of these toggles, we see sort of an iteration of the database view filtered to display only the items who contain the corresponding value of the grouping property. So within one hotels, we see only the people who have one hotels within their company property. And then Loggerhead Labs will contain only the people whose company is Loggerhead Labs. So what we can do is we can drag a person from one company to another, and that's going to ask you if you want to remove sorting. In most cases, you will not, so you can click cancel. But when you do that, that's going to change the value of that person's company property. And after you select that grouping property, you're also going to have the ability to identify a method for sorting your toggles. And then you may have noticed this toggle up at the top that says no company. That's going to appear by default when you choose a grouping property to contain any items that have empty values for that grouping property. And you can choose here to hide that default toggle. And then because boards already offered the ability to group items, this new grouping method with toggles is going to be known as a subgroup. So when viewing a board, you can click its three dotted menu and beneath the group option, you can find a subgroup option where you can identify a subgrouping property. So here we can choose the company property again. So the board is grouped by this certification status property, a select property, but then we have these toggles that are segmenting each of those primary groups into subgroups, in this case, into companies. And within this grouping update comes another little game changer, which is the ability to group by virtually any property type. So previously with boards, we could group by select, multi-select, and person properties. But now we can group by virtually any property type, including relations and formulas. So going back to our people example, we were grouping by the company property, which is a relation property that relates to an organization's database. You're still not going to be able to group by roll-up properties, however. And then we have Notion's improved color palette that's been reimagined to be more beautiful, more accessible, and to reduce eye strain. So that palette applies to text colors, background colors for highlighted text, callouts, and other blocks supporting color backgrounds, as well as select and multi-select options, which now feature distinctive text colors to maximize contrast. And those nice new colors can also be found in the backgrounds of board groups, which were previously unfilled. So now each group is colored according to the select or multi-select option that it represents. And within that group option of our three dotted menu, you can choose not to color the groups. And then in another useful update, we now have the ability to hide and display a view's properties in bulk. So back within that three dotted menu, if we choose properties, depending on the current configuration, you'll have the ability to click show all or hide all. And I like to start with all hidden and then selectively display them when I'm creating a new view. And then our last two updates are a little bit more subtle, but still notable. 
So initially, only workspace administrators had the ability to add integrations for supported services like Typeform and Automate.io and Zapier and Integramat. But now any member of a workspace can configure these integrations and admins retain the ability to manage them and review them and remove them if necessary from the integrations options of the settings and members item of the sidebar. And then lastly, Notion is officially available in Japanese. The full experience has been completely translated from every nook and cranny of the app to every template, the full documentation, and even live support is now available in Japanese. And after English and Korean, Japanese makes Notion's third official language. And whether or not you utilize these translated versions, this international growth ultimately fuels a more dependable and more robust experience for all users. So as always, if any questions arise as you tinker with these new questions, feel free to tweet at William Nutt.